Hi, my name is Don Long. I started this podcast to share not only my story, but to share others' untold stories, to share the truth and journey of healing, so I can show you that it is safe to do the same. We are transforming and healing together. This show is about the heart-centered transformation for you, for me, and the world. This is the Your Transformation Journey show, and this is our journey together. Let's begin. Our guest, John Giordano, is the doctor of human letters. He is an expert in the treatment of addiction, mental health, and the founder of the National Institute for Holistic Addiction Studies. He is the author of Proven Holistic Treatment for Addiction and Chronic Relapse. And his most recent book is the acclaimed How to Beat Your Addictions and Live a Quality Life and is the co-author of Molecular Neurobiology of Addiction Recovery the 12-step program and fellowship. Over 20 years ago, Garadano founded the prestigious G&G Holistic Addiction Treatment Center in North Miami Beach, Florida, which is a 62-bed inpatient and outpatient JCAHO accredited addiction treatment facility. Let's welcome John Garadano to the podcast. Well, First of all, I'm a recovering addict. I have uh, coming up on 37 years in recovery. Yay. And I watched my son almost die from this disease. I watched him put charcoal down his throat because he OD'd with a bunch of pills. So I said to myself, you know, there's so many kids that are dying. My son almost died. We need to, we need to change the way we do treatment. Unfortunately, the way we do treatment is outdated. It's about 70 years behind the times. And that's part of the problem. And it's based on an alcoholic model, uh, which is called the Minnesota model. And it was based in 1950 and is founded by this different stories. But the one story is there was these two young fellows who were studying psychiatry and one wanted to be a psychologist, and they came up with this model. They had no experience, of course, but they came up with this model. They packaged it and sold it to Hazleton. Hazleton gave it to the insurance companies, and here we go with the 28-day model. Well, as we all know, okay, drugs are much more powerful than alcohol. Drugs are damaging the brain, just like alcohol, but worse and much quicker. And... um, 28 days is kind of like almost like a joke because I'll tell you why. First of all, it takes people, okay, at least months really to for their brain to start reorganizing itself after the drugs and alcohol. Yeah. So let's say in three weeks, they start to clear up a little bit, all right? Now, the fourth week, they may, by the third week, they may bond with a therapist, Okay, and if they do, that's great. And then the fourth week, they have to leave, which doesn't make any sense. Okay, then they put them possibly in a three-quarter way house. That's where addicts and alcoholics live, okay, uh, with a supported environment. Uh, if they go there or they go home, which is worse, and some of them go into an intensive outpatient, outpatient, but some of them just can't handle, okay, being out by themselves so early on. My suggestion is, and it's based on a a model that's already been done, is they need a 60 to 90 day treatment inpatient. Okay, that gives their brain a chance to heal. Um, That gives them a chance to to see what direction they want to go in. Um, So it depends on the severity of the illness, whether it's 60 or 90 days. Too long is no good either because then they become dependent on on the treatment center. Uh, I think that's the right, the the good in-between time. Uh, They have the Physicians Referral Network, where it's physicians that um, use drugs and alcohol that turn themselves in or get caught, go to this program for 90 days. They also have a five-year aftercare plan. 
and they have about an 85 to 90 percent recovery rate. So we already have a model that works. And the problem is the insurance companies don't want to do that, which is foolish because a client goes into detox, comes out, goes into treatment, maybe gets high again, goes back into detox, goes high again, goes back into treatment, and that roller coaster ride keeps going. Yeah. So they're spending the money anyway. Must well do it right the first time. Yeah, I totally agree. And I think when you said the five-year follow-up program, I think that is key along with it because you are continuously having that support. It may not be as an intensive, but it still gives them the support that they actually need. And I think that is seriously, like you were saying, what we are lacking because we're throwing these people back out there and saying, okay, good luck. And that's not working. No, and it's not going to work. And here's why I also say we're really, we're, we're like ancient in the way we're treating addiction. Yes. There's psychological problems. Yes. There's trauma. Yes. There's uh, inner child work that you have to do. Uh, yes, 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 yes. Okay. But there's a medical component that we're not looking at, okay? First of all, addicts, when they get depressed or anxiety, they look to get high or medicated, whatever you want to call it, okay? So it's not always just a psychological problem. If you have a low thyroid, you can have depression and anxiety. And if you're prone for addiction, you're going to go run to get medicated. If you have leaky gut syndrome, H. pylori infection that comes from the gut, your microbiome, okay, you're going to have depression and anxiety. If you have hypoglycemia, which most alcoholics have, that's your sugar, low sugar, okay, you're going to have depression and anxiety. If you have a closed head injury, you're going to have depression, anxiety, and behavioral problems. So now that's only some of the medical conditions that are co-contributing factors to addiction and mental health problems. We are not looking at this. And that's the problem, okay? Because we're only treating the head, not the whole person. So let's send the head to the to, to treatment and leave the body home. Yeah. Let's let my check where it's integrated. Yeah, and you're right. And when you were talking about the hypoglycemic for alcoholics, my dad was an alcoholic and that's basically what he passed away from. And it was one of those things I tried to work with him and get him to understand that what you're doing to your whole body is more than just drinking the alcohol and destroying your human body. You're also destroying your mental capacity. You're destroying your gut. And unfortunately I was not able to get to him in time before he passed away. Well, you know, let me tell you what, what the problem is, is there's most people we're inundated with uh, information. That's only partially true. Yeah. And when you come up with new information, people say, yeah, yeah, that's okay. But they go to the old information. Okay. You know, there's a saying, if you keep doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results, that's insanity. So my question is, why do you keep, why do therapists and treatment centers keep doing the same thing over and over again, okay, and expecting different results when we only have a 5 to 8% recovery rate? Something's wrong, okay? So the bottom line is a lot of treatment centers are doing their best, okay? But the problem is, is that the insurance companies aren't doing their best. Remember, the insurance company's job is not to pay you. The treatment center's job is to get paid. Yep. So, and the clients are coming in sicker and sicker and sicker. All right. I've been in this 35 years. I've never seen them so sick. This fentanyl and car fentanyl and these designer drugs are causing mayhem in the brain and the body. Yeah. So we have to treat it as such. And we keep treating them on this old model, which is just warehousing people. And we're having a, it's like a circle. They go in, they go out, they go in, they go out, and they die or go to jail. So, you know, people go, oh, these self-help groups don't work. Uh, they, they think AA and A is a, a treatment. No, it's a support group, okay? I don't care where you go. 
You want to go to church? Fine. You want to go to self-help groups? Fine. I don't care where you go, but you need a support group. You need to be on the same path as people that are doing their best to become the best version of themselves, yeah. not addicts and alcoholics. So the, the sad part about all this is we're not up to date in treating people properly. Now you got heavy metals, toxicity. We got mercury, lead, mm -hmm. uh, antinomy. You got all these different heavy metals that interfere with neural transmission. And, and listen, whoever's listening to this podcast, I don't want you to believe a word I tell you. I want you to go and look for yourself. All right? I've lectured to over 200 countries. I work with 25 universities, doctors, scientists, and researchers. I'm in 70 now. I think it's 77 medical uh, science and peer-reviewed medical journals. So I'm coming from science and evidence-based. I worked with Dr. Blum, who's the geneticist who found the addiction gene or the alcoholic gene. So there's a lot of stuff going on. Yeah. One of our listeners says, she said, it's near impossible to get anyone the help that they need. That was my job for more than 10 years. If you get them in, they don't keep them long enough to help. It is not even a bad aid. And Sharon, you're right. It's not. Well, Sharon, you're 100% correct. Okay, that's the problem. And it's not really a lot of times, it's not the, the, the treatment centers, it's the insurance companies. Yeah. And the insurance company has co pays of 40,000, 20,000, 10,000. You might as well not have insurance. A whole medical system is a mess, yeah. unfortunately. So, all we can do is the best we can do. And I keep going out there doing my best to. Um, you know, give information that I learned and hopefully uh, between the insurance companies and the treatment centers, they get together and start to doing a model that's going to save lives instead of something that's just warehousing people. Yeah, exactly. And you brought it up just a little bit and she's, she said totally the insurance that is the issue and it is. And the reason why that I really wanted to have you on the show and talk about it is because we have a mass incarceration rate of 2.7 million people. Most of those people that are incarcerated are due to drug addiction, mental health issues. And our country, when it comes to the insurance piece of it, they're going to like, okay, slap a Band-Aid on it. Here you go. Out you go. But then they're going to end up in prison anyway because they're going to continue those same behaviors. And our prison system is not meant to be a mental health institution. Well, here's the deal. The only time the Senate and the House, and Democrats, Republicans, I don't know what you are, it doesn't matter to me, they're all the same, okay, is only going to do anything about this is when their children get it, yeah. okay? And that's when people move. You see, and, and the bottom line, they're in jail. That's the perfect time. You got them captured, okay, to do good treatment. Uh, but we're not doing that. We have treatment centers in some jails that are just same thing, same model, old-fashioned model. They don't prepare these people for, for the world. They don't give them life skill training, which they need. Uh, we don't, they don't train them so they can get a job also because they go back to the same thing they did before. And it's going to wind up with the same results. Yeah. So, you know, we, we do these podcasts just to, to, to teach people about this stuff. Look at our food industry. Look at, look at what's going on with this. this we, call, we call it a pandemic. Okay. Well, there's an epidemic going on that no one's really talking about. You might have a little splash here and there in the news. There's 93,000 people died last year of OD, that OD'd. 93,000 people. That means there's 93,000 families that are still suffering. Yeah. I think that's important. That's huge important. It's 93,000 families that no longer have their loved one. That's right. So, you know, like your dad died of alcoholism. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the bottom line is, is this. Most people are in denial. Okay. We understand that. Most people don't really know how to talk to their loved one, okay, that's suffering from this disease. So what happens is, is that it just goes on and on and on until the, 
eventually they die, go to jail, okay, or go to a, a program, maybe. A program that's inadequate. Now, I own g g Holistic Addiction Treatment Center in North Miami Beach. It was a 62-bed inpatient facility. We kept people minimum 45 days. Even if we didn't get paid, we kept them. And we gave them hyperbaric medicine to help heal their brain. That's oxygen under pressure. I work with a Dr. Paul Harch. He's a pioneer in hyperbaric medicine in the uh, uh, University of Louisiana. He's the one that went to the Senate and got them to prove wound healing for diabetics in the VA. Cool. So it also heals the brain, and it also is used for anti-aging. It's an incredible technology. So that's one. And then I work with Dr. Blum, who's the geneticist who found the addiction gene, and we came up with a, he came up with an amino acid uh, um, protocol compound that actually upregulates dopamine. Dopamine is a feel-good drug that we have that we manufacture ourselves. And by the way, dopamine and serotonin comes from your microbiome or your gut. Goes up the vagus nerve into the brain and deposits it. Okay, so if your gut's out of whack, you're out of whack. So these are the things that we did. And on the amino acids, we did spec scans, we did fMRIs, so we know that it upregulates dopamine. Yeah. It was a double blind study, which is the golden standard of doing, you know, research. Yeah. So there's a lot of things out there. A lot of people don't know what to look at. Okay. First, you got to look at the body. Okay. See what's going on medically. Then also at the same time, you have to look at the mind. Okay. Psychologically. And you got to take care of the whole enchilada. <laughs> yeah, you do. And I am so grateful for people that are doing that. One of my dreams was to eventually open up a center and it was originally going to focus around terminally ill patients and their families. And it was focusing on the mind, the body and the spirit. And it was very important to spiritual contact. Exactly. And it's one of those things that as I have been going along doing what I'm doing to see others taking that and running with it and really understanding that it takes more than just healing the mind because you're right. The body is a whole enclosed system. And unless we take care of that whole enclosed system, if you're targeting one thing, it doesn't mean it's going to be fixed permanently. Because all you're doing is just going like, okay, let's see if this works. And we're just throwing stuff at the wall to see what works. And unless you're taking care of all of it together, it's not going to. That's right. Well, look at the foods. You got processed foods. You got sugars. I'm 75 years old. I do not take any medications. I work out. I swim. I do karate. I'm also a grandmaster in the martial arts, black belt hall of fame, all that other stuff national karate champion. and I do a lot of stuff. Uh, one of my books to help people is called The Kid from the South Bronx Who Never Gave Up. Yeah. And I suggest very strongly people get the book. I usually just give it away. All right? It's on Barnes & Noble. It's at, let me see, uh, it's on Amazon. It's on Target. It's, it's, it's everywhere. And it's what happened to me growing up and how I came out of this and how I was homeless when I got in recovery and how I turned $300 into 45 million. So, yeah. So it's a, an interesting read. Uh, I only went to the ninth grade. Um, and then I got my GED and then I got all my certifications. I wrote it so I can help motivate people. My family was a mafia type family. My father was a heroin dealer. Um, on and on and on. Yeah. Yeah, and, I also wrote another book, How to Beat Your Addictions and Live a Quality Life. Yeah, so I was fixing to say, get those books because anybody that takes the time to write has a story to tell. And John, you have a huge story to tell. I know it'll help people. That is one of the main reasons why I wanted you on here because I know it's going to reach somebody and it's also helping me as well because we have a son that's currently incarcerated. He is incarcerated due to actions 
because he was molested at the age of eight. And he didn't know at the time, you're right, we did the things. We thought we were doing the right things. We got them mental health help, but it wasn't enough. And they don't know what to tell parents when you go through things like that with your child, what to look out for because they didn't know. And now we're in a situation to where he's basically going to have a scarlet letter if not all of his life, at least 15 years of his life when he comes home. So it's those things that I want people to realize that there's people out there that have taken the time to tell their story. So get these books. People aren't writing these just to write them. They're writing them because they want to impact somebody, at least one person. If we can do that, and if we can get one person to reach out to either myself or to John and say, hey, I need help, please get those books. If you know somebody in your family that needs to read it, buy it, gift it to them. Gifting books is my heart language. I actually got three books gifted me like right in a row last week. And I am overjoyed because now I get to read somebody's story, what it's going to do to help impact others and that is why i do this podcast that's great that's why i do podcasts myself and the bottom line is if i help one person i help a whole family yeah so you know this is god's work and that's what we're doing and i hope people are listening and i hope they they understand that what we're doing okay can save lives yeah exactly because Everyone, we're all out there struggling in some form or fashion, but you don't have to struggle for the rest of your life. You don't. Well, you know, there's a stigma around mental illness and addiction. People think it's a, a willpower, uh, you know, get over it and blah, 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 blah. And the reason why they say that because they don't have it. Yeah. But, but what's going on in the world today is that I think, I believe everyone knows somebody who's either an addict or has depression, who suffers from depression and anxiety. Yeah. So, you know, listen, guys, we have to face it, take care of it. Uh, write your congressmen, the senators about the insurance companies, how they just try to get people in and out and save money. And we're not, they're not saving lives. Yeah. The treatment centers do the best they can. Some of them are the, are the worst treatment centers in the world because they don't care about people. But that's not all of them, okay? Do your due diligence when finding a treatment center because there's a lot of people that are just into making money and not saving lives. But there are good treatment centers out there, and they do the best they can with what we have to work with. Yeah, definitely. John, as we get ready to wrap up, I always ask my guests, what is one last nugget that you can give our listeners? Real simple. Never give up. Yeah. And there are no failures. There are only lessons. So learn from your lessons. Don't give up and keep reaching out for help. Yeah. Help is there. And if you don't find it right away, keep going. If you wanted drugs and the drug man was out, I don't think you just say, well, he's out today. I don't think I'm going to get high. All right. So you got to find <laughs> somebody else. Exactly. Sharon was going like great testimony from you. Thank so, you. It's, it's been a pleasure and I would love to have you back on because we could so dive into so many different avenues and so many different discussions, especially when it comes to the mind body and how we are going to deal with that. <laughs> because you're right, diet is 99% of what we have to struggle with. And until people wake up and realize that, it's going to continue to see what we see. Absolutely. And spirituality is the foundation for any recovery. Yes. Which is really important. Whatever God is to them, you know, out there. God could be G-O-D, good orderly direction. I love that. I might start using that. (laughs) Yes, everybody has a different a different way of thinking about it. And for those of you that are listening, we are not talking about religion. There's a difference. Absolutely. And Re- we, religion is dogma. We don't talk yeah. about spirituality yeah. is learn to be kind instead of right. Don't lie. Don't do your yeah. best not to lie, cheat, or steal. 
help people less fortunate than yourself, help yourself. Um, you know, I, I believe that God gave us the gift of life, okay? It's what we do with that life is our gift back to God or creator or whoever you want to call the energy in the universe. Yes, exactly. So, John, thank you for coming on. And for everybody that is listening, I will be starting uh, the Find Your Strength When Your Ground is Shaking free four week course, most likely at the end of October because I have some things in the works. So, I will be starting that up again. I will shorten it this time to two weeks instead of four weeks. So, we're going to pack a whole lot in on those two weeks and we will be meeting on Sunday nights. So thank you again, John. I appreciate you coming on. My and pleasure. Everyone, as I always love to say, whether you know it or not, whether you believe it or not, you're unstoppable. You are the beacon of hope and you are loved. Everyone have a good afternoon. Bye. Adios. <laughs> Thank you for taking the time out of your day to listen to our podcast. To support the podcast, join our Patreon account through Podbean at Your Transformation Journey. Or if you like this episode, send us a review through iTunes and follow us on Podbean. You can also find me on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and also at my website at www.donlongcoach.com. Remember, you are unstoppable. Thank you.